What is going on my good people? Welcome back to the channel. This is Unnecessary Rambling. I am Brandon Sylvia. Thank you all for stopping by. Thank you all for tuning in for a, uh, a little a little pickups video, man. I Best Buy had their damn $10, what is it, $10 for 10 day deal thing or whatever. And I bought quite a few games off of that. We've had a bunch of damn recent releases that I've, I've picked up physically. And so... And I've kind of just been dabbling a little bit here, a little bit there. I haven't really sat down and dove into, but maybe two or three games like really deeply in the last few months. So I don't want to make like a full, you know, uh, what I'm playing episode where I try to give you some sort of review. I just kind of want to talk briefly about the games I have been checking out. And uh, the PS5 collection video did pretty well. So figure, hey, I'll give you a little update to my PS5 collection since I've added like 15 or so games. All right, so I don't really have these in any particular order here. Um, let's talk about Mortal Kombat 1 first off, since that's the last game that I have been playing most recently. And I'm probably about four or five hours into the main story at this point. And it's been a long ass time since I've played a Mortal Kombat game. Uh, probably the last one I played was whatever, Armageddon, Deception, it's been since the PS2, since I've played a Mortal Kombat game, and with them rebooting the franchise with this entry, I was just like, yeah, let me, let me jump in here, give it a go, see what the hype is about, because I know people have been praising this thing, and um, I've had a great time with it, the story is presented so damn well, it is, the cinematics are just top tier, some of the best on current gen systems just from a visual perspective even world building art design it's really really impressive across the board visually and from a technical perspective as well it's incredibly impressive you know seeing the how they'll cut from the fight to the the cutscenes and the totally seamless transition there it doesn't have that weird kind of stutter that takes place or any of the weird transition effects that you would see like back in the ps3 days or even ps4 days for that matter it, it really does feel like a current gen fighting game from you know every sense of the phrase and like i said i'm not at all a fighting game guy i've always you know anytime i've played fighting games it's just been for the story and the only fighting games i've ever played or had any interest in was mortal kombat and i think probably a lot of that was from a young age seeing the the gore and the brutality and seeing that on offer here with these next gen visuals the visual fidelity of today seeing people you know seeing skulls being crushed and bodies being ripped apart it is Definitely a sight to behold, as as gory and uh, uh, brutal as you've ever seen in your life. And listen, I, I'm playing the damn campaign on the... Well, I, I gotta give myself a pat on the back here. I started off on very easy mode to get myself up to speed. Uh, I have graduated to easy mode. So I, I got my cap and gown. I'm, I'm able to play Mortal Kombat 1 on easy mode. And... Like I said, I, I, I can't break down the intricacies of a fighting game to you all. I don't know shit about fighting games. It's not my genre at all. I'm horrible at these games. But it's fun. The cameo characters are fun. Bringing them into the mix, doing the little tag team maneuvers. That's fun. And all the special abilities and shit. I am trying to, to learn it a little bit. It's not going to be a game that I immerse myself in for 40, 50 hours or try to play competitively or anything like that. Just wanted to see what the story mode was about. And I've really been enjoying it. The, the Scorpion Sub-Zero storyline is damn good. Johnny Cage and his narcissistic Hollywood to the core ass in this game he is just it's hilarious man he's running around filming everything when he's summoned to the earth realm he's running around filming everything with his iphone trying to raise his status in hollywood as like a legit action hero man i would just i would absolutely kill for uh you know a 3d third person action adventure game in the mortal in the mortal Kombat universe i know they tried it with like Shaolin Monks and the the weird PlayStation 1 game and I loved Shaolin Monks and I even I played a good bit of that PlayStation 1 game back in the day but I, I would love to see it, it with modern standards what they could pull off there even if they just license it off to a different studio to take a crack at it because even like one of the the coolest missions so far is Reptile 
he is like doing a, a stealth invasion and all of it takes place in a cutscene. I'm just thinking, damn, it'd be so cool to, you know, have those traversal abilities as reptile for a little bit and, you know, just kind of swapping back and forth between a couple characters throughout the game and using their abilities in combat, but outside of combat as well to traverse and, you know, just those little elements I think would be really cool in a, in a, just third person action adventure game. All right, and next up we got Atlas Fallen. And um, I was really looking forward to, to checking out Atlas Fallen. It definitely did not meet expectations. Not that I really had high expectations for it, but I had high hopes for it. I was hoping that it was gonna turn out decent because you know the, the character action genre is a genre that I absolutely adore. And I just find the, the gameplay to be so fun, kinetic, constantly. And I will say that this game does very much reward you for being on the attack, being on the offensive, and engaging in battle opposed to rewarding you for more defensive maneuvers and rolling around and blocking. And like, this is a game where, I mean, one of the main hooks is that you build up this uh, momentum meter of sorts and to get access to like your best moves and best abilities you have to constantly be building that meter up to be able to perform any of the cool shit in the game and the only way to do that is to stay on the offense stay attacking and constantly building that meter up so i do really enjoy that i also really enjoy the uh, platforming in this game it's really weird and it almost feels akin to something like a PlayStation 1 game where you can reach destinations and get to, you know, your your desired destination quicker by platforming in the weirdest of ways in areas where it's like, I don't know if I'm supposed to be able to actually reach this ledge, but I'm just going to try to jump around and see if I can glitch the game into allowing me a, a faster waypoint to where I want to go. And... I actually really enjoy that. The The biggest downfall with this game, for one, I think the combat, as, as much as you are rewarded for staying on the offense, it is a little bit the, the weight to your, your moves. It doesn't feel like it has the impact that you would get from like a Devil May Cry game or from a Bayonetta game. It just feels a little bit floaty, for lack of a better term. But the thing that I really was just blown away by was how low budget the the story and uh, the presentation of the story is in Atlas Fallen. It's like, and it's not, I don't really mind that if it's not prominently featured. Like if you have a below average story with some shitty animation, shitty cutscenes, whatever, and it's not in your face nonstop, then cool. I, I don't care, but you're nonstop being hit with dialogue with the worst character models and the worst cutscenes, and it's just nonstop one after another. And I only played for about four hours or so, but in those four hours, I was really surprised how prominently this story was being featured and how low quality it was. And I never skip dialogue, never skip cutscenes or anything like that, which you can say, you know, that's maybe my fault in a game like this, just skip to it and get to the combat. But I don't know, like I want to like a story. Uh, that's one of the main reasons I pick up a game is for some cool ass gameplay and hopefully a cool ass story. And the, the story is just really, really bad and really poorly presented. And now we got a real bummer, man. Immortals of Avium. I don't know if you all heard the news recently, but like half of the, the studio was let go and it seems that the game really underperformed. It just didn't sell nearly as well as uh, they were expecting. And it's the debut of a new studio. And I, I think that I, I don't want to make too large of a, an assumption here or, you know, go on the, the doom and gloom spree, but... I do think we need to start kind of worrying about new IP and at least being cautious of this trend of new IP consistently underperforming like, you know, Callisto Protocol and a lot of uh, layoffs were taking place there because of it underperforming. Immortals of Avium, a lot of layoffs taken, taking place with that studio for it underperforming. And these are two debut games of new studios and this, that really sucks because I, well, the Callisto Protocol was okay. This game, Immortals of Avium, is really 
fucking good. If you like first person shooters of that PS3 360 era that's not going to just totally suck up all your time and try to keep you in this constantly evolving live service loop, Immortals of Avium is a game to check out, man. It's It took me like maybe 15 hours to get through, and you can get through it quicker than that if you want to. The cinematics are fantastic. The The character models are fantastic. The story is pretty solid. It's, it's a little bit, you know, in that fantasy, too much of the, the jargon and too much of the fantasy terms that you're never going to really understand or know what the hell they're talking about. But I, I do think they simplify the basics of the story to get you up to speed and at least care about what's going on at a base level. But the gameplay here is, is really damn enjoyable, man. It, it's kind of a standard first person shooter with more magical powers like you have your green ability that is essentially a, a machine gun style blast you have your red magic that shoots shotgun style blast and then your your blue which is you know a pistol or a rifle and you upgrade those and each of those can have different attacks and even different styles in, in how they attack so you can increase the speed decrease the speed but add more power to the shots and so you can kind of go in and tinker with each of these powers like you could with a weapon like if you're crafting a gun and you know you put a, a scope on it and you increase maybe the accuracy and the power but decrease the volume and so you can do stuff like that when you're upgrading and when you're kind of changing around your magic powers but there's a lot even beneath that that makes the combat rewarding and fun to engage with on a consistent basis you'll get like a whip and you can pull enemies in with the whip and like jump in midair and kind of you'll be in the air you hit them with the shotgun blast right before they get to you they go flying and you'll have like a um a spell that you can cast like r1 square x circle triangle they all do different spells and you'll have one that you can pull the ground up from under you and like enemies that are guarding themselves with a shield you can send them flying and they're totally vulnerable for a moment and there's a lot of just those cool upgrades that you can mess around with and tinker with i only have two real big criticisms for the game and one it isn't the biggest deal one is that the story is just really predictable towards the end and uh, the other though is that towards the end of the game it becomes very damn difficult out of nowhere the entirety of the game is so 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 easy up until like the last 45 minutes to an hour it's just like this non-stop boss gauntlet and it, it doesn't really gel with what the game is offering up for the first whatever 12 13 hours because to me my favorite thing about the game was the fact that i was able to test out all these different abilities on the fly and have fun and it felt like this spontaneous i can i'm gonna try this for a bit i'm gonna try this for a bit and i never felt punished for doing that whereas towards the end it started to to feel like okay i just need to find the cheesiest way to get through this and i just I found that to not be enjoyable at all. So I just ended up cranking the difficulty down to easy, getting through the last 45 minutes, and I was still having a damn good time playing the way I wanted to. But yeah, man, real bummer that the the studio seems to be in in rough shape. I hope that's not their their first and last game i think that's super unfortunate for a team not to be able to kind of learn from their mistakes and take something take some of those lessons into a new game if that's the first and last game for them that's really gonna bum me out because that's a good game that's Callisto Protocol, I, I, I think there's a ton of improvements that can be made there, and I think that studio could really turn around and, and crank out a great survival horror game at some point, but Immortals of Avium is a really good game. Like The, the foundation that they built with their first game is really, really strong, and I, I hope they get another crack at it. All right, and next up here, I gotta wear my L. I picked up Madden 24, and the only reason I picked this up was because I knew they were bringing back some of the mini games. I do gotta say they they brought back more than I was expecting. They brought back the bench press. They brought back the forty yard dash. They have like the pre draft interviews and all that stuff. So it felt you know kind of nostalgic for a moment. Felt PS three era Madden ish to me. But very quickly the uh, rose tinted glasses, the the rose colored glass, whatever the hell the term is, very quickly. That faded, and I was left going, oh yeah, this feels just like the last Madden game that I played, which was in 2019, 2020 or so. It's been a few years since I've played a Madden game, and there's just 
there haven't been any significant upgrades to the gameplay in my opinion so as fun as the mini games are and i do think the mini games are actually pretty damn fun i was willing to check it out i don't i'm not like crying my blues about it but I do think that this is the last Madden game I'll buy, at least until they make some pretty serious improvements to just the, the core gameplay and the this career mode, franchise mode, all that stuff. But, uh, you know, hey, I, I'm at least happy that we got some damn mini games back in the mix. Now just get to work on the gameplay and maybe you can have a complete product by Madden 2029. All right, and next up we got old Under the Waves. A nice... Good old uh, uh, swimming simulator, a submarine simulator, if you will. You're playing as this professional diver, and you're going uh, to the depths of the sea, and you are gathering metal and plastic and different resources to craft and upgrade your submarine with. And I like these kind of slower, quiet serene walking simulator style games every now and then especially with the twist here of the isolation the dread of being you know lost at sea potentially i don't know what angle they were going to take I only put about three hours into it i got to a really really annoying point of the game where you're you're told to like find this probe area or, or some shit and it's such an annoying ass mission where you're just mindlessly trying to find the, this area and it, the navigation is horrible in this section and I just I personally don't want to waste time searching for where the hell to go in a game like this uh, that, that is like the one thing that'll put me off these style of games so quickly if I'm just mindlessly wandering around without any idea of where to go I will say, though, the, the voice acting was solid. The dialogue was well written. I was interested in this character's story, and they were doing, like, these flashbacks and, like, maybe mild hallucinations that were taking place. And it was cool just exploring sea and seeing a, a whale or seeing a, a dolphin pop up or, like, you know, being right next to a fucking shark and feeling that... Uh, intense natural dread that's gonna take place in that moment like those things were cool and i definitely would have continued playing if it wasn't for that one section so i don't know man it, maybe if, if you guys are into the subnauticas and games of that ilk maybe give under the waves a look all right and now we got one that i really want to get back to and finish before the end of the year and that is daymare 1994 sandcastle i enjoyed played through and finished daymare 1998 and um, I think from the first few hours that I've put into 1994, I'm enjoying it substantially more than the first game. It seems much cleaner. It seems far less janky. And the only real jank that I've encountered has actually been in the cutscenes, which is so bizarre. It's a lot of screen tearing and pop in and stuff during the cutscenes, which is really, really weird. But I do enjoy how much of a focus has been put on the narrative here and they're really delving into some detailed cinematics and shit at time if it wasn't for the the popping and stuff i'd be pretty damn impressed by the the cinematics in this game sure the character models aren't triple a level or anything like that and the lip sync isn't perfect at times but it looks pretty damn good for a indie like straight up indie to the core game the audio design is also incredible here. You'll be, you know, uh, like walking through the blood. You'll you'll hear the stickiness of the blood pool when you walk through it. It's grotesque and it, it's really damn well done, man. I also think it's an interesting take where they, they've made their enemies so much faster in Daymare 1994. So it feels kind of more comparable to a action game than just a straight up survival horror game. And... It, like the the resource resource management from my time spent so far hasn't been a huge issue at this point which i really do enjoy the item management resource management in survival horror games but i think this is a fun twist it seems more action-packed and in your face they i, I did just get uh like a freeze i was uh, the ability to freeze enemies so i wonder if now it's going to be a little bit harder to find resources since I, i'm expecting them to put a focus on freezing the enemy and then take them taking them out while they're frozen but i've really been enjoying daymare 1994 so far and i would say it's for sure a step up from you know the first couple hours that i've put into it definitely a step up from the first game all right 
And next up, we got Crime Boss Rock A City, a game that I really, really want to like, and I don't think that I do. And I, I knew that this was probably going to be the case whenever I heard that it was a roguelike or roguelite structure to the, the core game design they were built around being a roguelite where instead of having new and fresh and fun content that you're constantly getting to experience you just repeat the same old shit that way they can justify giving you your 10 hour experience it's not for me i hate that structure to 99.9 percent of games and i definitely hate it here because i actually found the gameplay of crime boss rocky city to be you know silly and fun enough i found the story to be really endearing and you know it has this 90s just fun and outrageous vibe to it which is totally you, you don't see stories like this at all anymore and so it was such a breath of fresh air when i first dove into it. i was like hell yes and then the first time my damn character and there's a way to cheese this so you never have to experience any replaying of the game and you never have to go through that and you can just get through the main campaign without really worrying about it the only way you have to replay sections is if you send your main character out into the missions travis uh baker or whatever if you send him out into the missions and he gets killed you have to restart but you have other gang members that you can hire, and if you send them out into the missions and keep Travis, you know, you don't play with him at all, you don't use this character at all, and he never dies, you never have to restart anything. But all the upgrades that you get throughout the game, or a lot of the upgrades that you get throughout the game, are centered around upgrading Travis. So it's like, you know, that's kind of a bummer, and it's not the hardest game in the world like you can get through it with the the other gang members but i don't really want to play that way that just i want to upgrade this character and go around using this character because i have some decent upgrades for him you know and it's like so blatantly obvious why they use the the roguelike structure here where you have like these gang turf wars that are taking place where you're supposedly taking over new turf and you're battling it out with another gang but you're battling it out on the exact same turf that you just took over in the last three turf wars that you participated in. So th there's just not new locations and new content and new shit to engage with. The robberies are all in the same, you know, couple locations, no new level design, no new interior exterior design. So it's like, yeah, okay, let's slap a roguelike structure on this so that we can squeeze out 10 hours. And yeah, I, I hate, I fucking hate this new trend. I would rather you just give me a five-hour first-person shooter than a 14, 15-hour, you know, campaign where I'm seeing the same shit over and over again. And then on top of that, dying and then having to experience that same shit over and over again, uh, uh, over and over again, again. I sound like fucking Nelly and Tim McGraw. I think about it over and over again. But yeah, man, I wanted to like Crime Boss Rocky City, but I just really don't if i'm being honest it may be people who are more into roguelikes and that style of structure maybe you can find something to enjoy with it death straining so every game from here on out is in that ten dollar ten day best buy deal thing whatever the hell it's called i picked up death straining for ten dollars i was like fuck it i don't know if i'll ever replay this game i played about 15 hours of it on the playstation 4 and did not really like it at all. It just was so damn boring and pretentious to me. But if I ever do play it, and I know that a lot of cool content that actually makes the game more of a game and more fun was supposedly added into the PS5 version. So maybe I'll um maybe I will check this out at some point. Sackboy, a big adventure. This just looks really fun. Looks really damn fun. And every now and then I get the urge to play, you know, one of these 3D platformers. And this is one that I think I would like to check out at some point. It's not at the top of my backlog or anything like that, but it looks cute. It looks fun. The level design looks really solid. So Sackboy, a big adventure for 10 bucks. I was like, how about we put it in the collection? Watch Dogs Legion. This is just one of those dumb purchases where it's like, it's $10. I buy it for the collection. It, is there a chance I go back and play this very, very low? I thought it was okay. I played it on the PlayStation 4. I thought it was okay, but will I return to it? I don't know. Destruction All-Stars. I With this game, the thing that I'm the most curious about is uh, Lucid, the developer there. 
the rumor that they are making the new Twisted Metal game. So I just want to see like if the core gameplay that they created with Destruction All-Stars, if it's decent, and if I should... Because here's the thing. The fact that it failed as a live service game, that's not necessarily indicative of the, the fact that they can't create a core, decent, you know, car combat gameplay loop. And I'm often pretty critical of the idea of bringing Twisted Metal back, especially with this developer. And I feel like I don't really have any ground for that criticism until I play the game and I can actually say for myself if there is some sort of decent loop here that maybe they could translate into just a bigger IP with more name recognition and maybe get something successful out of that. So I will play Destruction All-Stars at some point just to dabble with it a little bit to, to have some idea for this team's capabilities. And we got a Balan Wonderworld. Got got to show some love to my guy Yuji Naka over there. And staying on theme there with Square Enix, we got Outriders. And I played this on Game Pass a whenever it released on Game Pass. Was it a day? Yeah, I think that was a day one game. I wonder what they paid for that. Those th those leaks that just came out were wild, fucking wild, man. Three hundred and fifty million dollars to get Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Crazy the amount of money they're having to pay for big AAA games, which I know they didn't end up paying that for Jedi Survivor. And then five million dollars for Baldur's Gate Three. How do you not see the writing on the wall at that point? And get I I don't know. That might have been just like expected. I wonder if Larian would have bit on that price point but regardless i played about five hours of outriders when it was on game pass i thought it was decent enough i think they're making a sequel to it and so yeah for 10 bucks thought why not add it to the collection so there we go a nice little little overview there let me try to there we go you can kind of see a little bit better there everything that has been added to the collection today and yeah, man, if you guys like this, uh, drop a like on the video, drop a, a comment for the algorithm, and I will continue making these. I, you know, I can't commit to like a monthly schedule or whatever, because sometimes there's only a couple games I'll buy in a month. But whenever I have a good pile of 10 or so games to briefly talk about and, and share some of my thoughts with you guys, I will do it in this format if you guys do indeed enjoy this format but yeah man stay tuned stick around S look over at that damn community tab stay up to date with that community tab because i will still be posting polls there for you all to vote on and uh pick whatever individual piece of content you want to see created here on the channel but with that out of the way i hope you all have a good day and i will see you good people in the next video goodbye